In this colorful animation, we will learn how mitochondria produce the energy carrier ATP to provide the cell with energy. Our skin, muscles, bones, and organs are made up of tiny living organisms called cells. Because they are so tiny, they cannot be seen with the naked eye. But if we get close enough, we can see them. The lung cells visible here fulfill very specific tasks for the entire organism. Like all other cells in our body, lung cells also need energy and therefore have small power plants that provide the energy they need. These power plants are called mitochondria. Mitochondria produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is seen as the universal energy carrier, which we will look at in more detail later. The structure of mitochondria is always the same. Mitochondria have an outer and an inner membrane. The intermembrane space is located between the outer and the inner membrane. The matrix space is located deep inside the mitochondria. ATP is produced by certain enzymes known as complexes, which are found in the inner membrane. These complexes are part of the respiratory chain. Let's take a look at how these complexes provide energy for the cell. Complex 1 first oxidizes the NADH molecule. This means that two electrons are transferred to the complex. The respiratory complex then transfers or donates two electrons to coenzyme Q10. In addition, four protons are pumped to the other side with the help of the electrons. The pumping of protons from the matrix space into the intermembrane space is of central importance. We will see later why this process is important for the production of ATP. In complex two, succinate is oxidized to fumarate, which reduces coenzyme Q10, that is two electrons are transferred to Q10. However, the energy is not sufficient to pump protons from one side to the other. The first two complexes have completed their task. Let us now take a closer look at the third and the fourth respiratory complex. Coenzyme Q10, which has taken up the electrons, transports the electrons to the third complex. The reactions that take place cause an electron to be transferred to cytochrome C. In addition, one proton is removed from the matrix. Two protons are released into the intermembrane space. Cytochrome C transfers the electron to the fourth complex. Finally, complex four reduces oxygen to water with the help of the four electrons, an oxygen molecule, and four protons from the matrix. In addition, four of the eight protons are pumped from the matrix space into the intermembrane space. In the next step, the production of the energy carrier ATP begins. Pumping the protons into the intermembrane space creates a difference in the concentration of protons. There are many protons on one side and only some on the other. In order to establish an equilibrium, the protons try to move to the other side, but can only cross the membrane via the fifth complex. The flow of protons provides the ATP synthase with the energy it needs, to synthesize the energy carrier ATP from ADP and phosphate.
This energy conversion is similar to the principle of a turbine in a pumped storage power station. The animation of the pumped storage power plant is also available on this channel. The reaction inside the ATP synthase is very easy to understand. In several steps, adenosine diphosphate with two phosphate groups is converted into adenosine triphosphate with three phosphate groups. The result is an energy-rich molecule with three phosphorus atoms. As long as the complexes pump protons into the intermembrane space, the ATP synthase will produce ATP. However, as soon as the protons are no longer being pumped, the same number of protons will be evenly distributed on both sides. The flow of protons will stop and the ATP synthase will no longer produce ATP. Let's take another very simplified look at the entire process. The color red stands for electrons, the color yellow for protons. Due to the flow of electrons, the complexes pump protons into the intermembrane space. The protons flow through the ATP synthase and thus drive the production of ATP from ADP and phosphate. The electrons can flow off at the fourth complex with the help of oxygen and the cycle begins again. The production of ATP by adding a phosphorus atom with the help of oxygen is called oxidative phosphorylation. Let's take a look at the same process with individual particles. We see oxygen shown here in blue taking up red electrons. The yellow protons are pumped upwards by the complexes and then flow back through the ATP synthase. If oxygen were no longer available, the electrons would no longer be able to flow out of complex four. Due to the congestion of electrons, the complexes can no longer pump protons to the other side. The ATP synthase would no longer produce ATP. Oxygen, which is absorbed by the lungs and reaches every cell in our body with the help of the heart and blood vessels, is therefore an important building block in the production of ATP. ATP can then be consumed by ATPases in all cells. ATPases are also enzymes within cells. For example, there are calcium ATPases that use ATP in water to pump calcium from one side of a membrane to the other. This reaction is known as hydrolysis. This produces ADP and phosphate again. This was the process of the respiratory chain. The other two phases of cellular respiration, glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, are also available on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and watch.